behavior. It's a radical lifestyle change when you repent and believe. Because now you see the goodness of God in the land of the living and you bless His name. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. I'm a born again Christian. I believe that Christ died for my sins according to the scriptures, the gospel, the good news. I stand and lift up my voice that all may hear the good news that Christ forgives sinners. I've obtained mercy. I've obtained uh, the forgiveness of sin. I deserve to go to hell. I, I have broken God's commandments, His laws, but God has shown me grace. Grace that is coming to you tonight through the preaching of the gospel. God's grace enabling and it will reflect, reflect in your heart, in your life. And God moves upon your heart. And people see the change. You've been changed. You don't just say, I believe in God. No, your lifestyle magnifies it, reflects it, reveals it. Yes, people know that you've been changed because you no longer live the way that you lived before. They see that you no longer are uh, doing that which is ungodly or unholy, but now you walk with God, you know God, you know His mind, you know His will, you know what pleases Him, and you walk in an attitude of thanksgiving. You walk in an attitude of gratefulness. You walk in an attitude of worship, where you worship the Lord. You, you, uh, you give worth to the Almighty. Yes, you realize. You realize that you're a sinner and that you have broken God's commandments. You realize that you are hell bound and Jesus Christ is the only one. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one that will rescue you, deliver you, save you, forgive you, cleanse you. Jesus Christ, that's the name. This is above every name. Jesus Christ. He's the one that you will stand before. He is God. He's the resurrection and the life. He is the one. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. And we stand and proclaim that Christ only, Jesus Christ only can deliver you from your addictions, from your loneliness, from that which is destroying you from within, your sin nature destroying you, eating you alive from within, the hatred, the bitterness, the anger, the resentment, all the things that you hate about yourself and about the world and about everyone that you're around. Oh yeah, I was like you. I hate it when people hate one another. But when the love of God comes in, what does he do? He sets you free. What does he do? He gives you love for people. Oh, now you won't rip them off. You won't lie to them. You won't cheat them. Oh, you won't use them. You won't manipulate them. Oh, you know how you live. Oh, you know the anger. You know the hatred. You know, you know that which is in your life that you suppress and deny and reject. And God breaks through and he says, I'll heal. I'll forgive. I'll set you free. You can have rest. You can have peace. You can have joy, fulfillment, satisfaction, delight in His presence. But what do you do? Continue to smoke cigarettes? Try to, try to ease the stress, the pain. Try the pain of life. All that you don't have. All that you will never be. Your dreams are shattered. Your life is ruined. But what do you do? What do you do? Oh, you turn to drugs. You turn to sex. You turn to rock and roll. You turn to whatever. That, that You don't have to deal with your guilty conscience. You don't have to deal with the pain. Oh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Your life is a train wreck. Your life, man. You have nothing to show for, for the year after year after year. But Christ can redeem. Christ can restore. Christ can renew. Christ, Jesus Christ, can bring life to you. Why do you keep throwing it aside? Why do you keep denying it? Finding people to stroke your ego, stroke your vainglory, as if your conscience is not is going to be at ease. Your conscience is crying out, guilty, guilty, guilty. Your conscience is crying out. And where can you turn? Another bottle of liquor? Another cigarette? Where are you going to turn? Where are you going to turn to? What's going to deliver you? How? Huh? What's going to set you free from the pain? How huh? you going to walk the streets? trying to find some relief, some relief where you can't find relief. You can't find relief until you come to the living God. You come to Jesus Christ. You take off the outfit. You take off the facade, man. No, you come to Christ, man. Don't horse around with God, man. This ain't a joke, man. 
You, you guys love Halloween, man. You, you love to act out something you're not. Because why? Because you don't like who you are. Your identity. Who are you, a horse? Man, who are you, man? Where are you going? What's the meaning of life? What's the purpose of life? Why do you exist? These are the questions that run through your, your, your mind. Uh, and, and what do you turn to? What do you turn to? You people want to be scared. It's like, it's like this Halloween season or whatever you call it. Everybody wants to be scared. Boo! Boo! Uh, yeah. I see you're really scared. You're really scared. What you need to do is you need to be scared of God. You need to fear God. 1 Peter 2, 17, because it says so in the Bible. The book, the book that you guys don't know anything about. 1 Peter, 2, 1 Peter 2, 17. Read it. It's in the Bible. It says fear God. Exact words. Fear God. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You need to fear God. You don't fear a, a Freddy Krueger, Chucky. You don't, you don't fear the horror flicks. You don't fear the haunted house. You better fear God. God's going to call you into judgment for everything you do, good or evil. The Bible says to fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring into judgment every work with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether... You don't know what the Bible says. I'm trying to have a good night. Oh, no. You're going you're to have a miserable night unless you repent and give your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible, the Word of God in the Bible says to receive with meekness the engrafted Word of God which is able to save your soul. The Word of God can save you. You can be changed by the power of God. You can be born again. Where does it say in the Bible to go out and preach to everybody else? Mark 16, 15. Easy. That's an easy one. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 2. It's simple. There's many verses in the Bible that say preach. The Bible says preach. Preach. Publicly proclaim. What was Jesus' main message? Preach the Word. No. His main message? No, it was not. His main message was repent. Read it. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 12. Repent! The time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus' main message was repent. Repent. Repent, change your mind. Your mind is filthy. Your mind is disgusting. It's abominable. Before God, God sees every thought. That's that right. should scare the hell out of you. That God could read your mind. Nasty. Ah. All right, so there's some perverted thoughts going through this one over here, I'm sure. Some what? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, you're not thinking about the preamble of the Constitution when you're, you know, playing with yourself. Hello? Hey, Hello? Everybody gets off on. <laughs> That's just plain weird. That's almost as weird as a skull with a knife through it. What's the fascination with death, anyway? The fascination is because there's nothing to fear from death. Oh, you say that now, but when you're laying on your deathbed, you're going to be going, oh, God. I have died. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. You're not going to be going, oh, I can't wait to die and go to hell. I can't wait to go be with all my friends. Please, doctor, can you hurry up? I want to die and go to hell. Most people are going to be crying out to God on their deathbed saying, please, God, have mercy on me. There's no hell. Please, oh, that's what you say. What's up? Hell, please, God, have mercy. Don't let me die. I don't want to die, Lord, please. And they're going to remember everything their mom, their grandma, their grandfather, they read in Sunday school and the Bible and the, and the little bit of Bible that you did read. And you're going to remember it all. And all of a sudden, the fear of God is going to grip your heart. And you're going to go, oh, God, please don't let me die. Please, God, I don't want to die. I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready to die. What's up with Or you're going to go, hey, oh, hey, God, you know, I'm ready to go to hell now. Uh, uh, go ahead and take me out. What's no, I don't think so, man. What's up with Lot's kids? I'm not so, uh, they're perverts. Wait, I have a question. Not out of the They were perverts. Are, the kids are. They're sort of like you. I have a question. Why should well, why? I fear a Well, because they raped their own father. <laughs> but why'd they do why they, they got do? him drunk and raped him. Why? Because they were weird, man. Why should I They were weird. A benevolent being. Well, what's normal about it? It's something that happened, and God just relays that story to you. Do you know both of those nations do not exist right now? God didn't relay that story. Oh, yeah, the, the Bible is God's word. And now the prophets relayed that story. And who wrote, who wrote what? Did God write it, or did God write it? Did the people write it? 
Who wrote the Bible? Did God write the Bible or did the people write the Bible? Well, no one knows who wrote the fuck. Oh, wrote the Bible. yes, it does. There's, they, all, they all have their names on their authors' names right on it. Uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel. Uh, <laughs> there's Ju uh, Jude. There's John, why, Mark. Why would there's, God? Why would God allow, allow something like that to happen? Well, because He wants you to understand. He He doesn't want the gospel to be hidden from you. He wants you to understand. It. He wants you to come into a right relationship with Him. He doesn't want you to just wander along in life aimlessly and you just do all this wickedness and then you die and you go to hell he wants you to be in life he wants to give you life he wants to give you the power of life eternal life you didn't answer the question why would he allow something like that to be done he doesn't allow anything like that he it's listen men are wicked god is not okay sin is disobedience to god okay you choose to sin against god you're going to pay the price there are stories in the Bible that relate the, the choices of men and women. It's wicked. There's a bunch of stuff in there that's really bad. Because that's, that's the way life is. There's all kinds of wickedness everywhere. Look at the nation you live in. Is, is it a lesson or is it a guide? It could be both. It depends on uh, you know, where, you're, where you're going. I mean, if you're just looking at it to be amused, well, I guess it could be a, an interesting story. But if you're definitely submitting to God and you want to be led by God, then it could guide you. Trying to be aroused, mostly. No, 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 no. There's real amazing things that are in that Bible that they'll change. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. But you, you have to submit to God first. You have to understand that God wants you to understand Him. But God does care. God cares about you, man. God wants you. Oh yeah, this is God's love that He would come and rebuke you. That God would come and reveal to you. That God would do something in your life. Oh, on the day. On the day, man. The day of the Lord. You understand? You're going to die and I'm going to die. Yeah. We're going to die and we're going to stand before Him. Praise the Lord the day you die. We're going to stand before Him. And on that day when you stand before Him. I try to point you to Christ that when you stand before Him, you hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. On that day when you stand before God, your sins are blotted out. Jesus Christ, the mediator, stands between you and God. And he says, enter into your rest. Enter into your rest. Oh, what are you going to hear? Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness, you evildoer, you who loved your pleasure, you loved your sin, you loved yourself. Or did you love God with all of your heart? With all of your soul, with all of your might. And he says, come, enter into the, to the kingdom of God. Because you did kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, what is God's kingdom? God's kingdom is righteousness, doing what is right. Righteousness, doing what is good. What pleases God? What pleases God? What pleases God? What pleases the Almighty? What pleases Jesus Christ? Oh, righteousness, righteousness, holiness, purity, uh, that truth. What does God love? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is God's will in heaven? You think sodomy is God's will in heaven? You think sodomy is in heaven? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How do you think fornication is happening in heaven? You think liars are in heaven, those who lie? You think Halloween is in heaven? No way. No way. Thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. You better find out what's going on in heaven. What's going on in heaven is supposed to be going on on earth. Your rebellion, your drunkenness, repent, sinner, I hope I see you in heaven. I hope you come to the end of yourself tonight when you're all by yourself. God gives you a revelation of how wicked you are. You get on your knees at home, man. And you say, Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive me, cleanse me, change me. I need to be born again. Oh, I need hope, man. My life is a train wreck. Your life is a train wreck. You laugh on the inside, but on the outside, but on the inside, you're crying like a baby. You know exactly what you're listening to. You know it, man. Your life, your life. Where you go, most people's lives are a train wreck and they just drink it down to bury the pain, the scars, the wounds, the hurt. Oh, man, that's why you're a drunkard, man. You hide. And then you think if you just beat the, beat the guy up, man. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. 
Shut the fuck up! Never. Who the fuck are you Christmas. to say God's words in Christmas. front of everybody? Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Shut up. Say nothing. Because you ain't nothing but a little bitch. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Feel better now? I wasn't even talking. I wasn't even talking. The Spirit of God was talking to him. Now, did you kids want to repent? No, no. Uh, you, you, you want to get right, huh? Huh? Will you repent, man? I mean, that's not the way you should talk to your elder. You could be my son. My son is 35, man. You need a good whip. And does your dad? Does your dad know you talk like that? You need to get your mouth washed out with soap. You know, because when you grow up, you're gonna reap the consequences of your attitude. You think because your peers right here think you're cool because you can say those kind of things? Man, you have no character. You have no integrity. You have nothing in your life that is that gives you any weight, any weight of power or conviction or zeal. You're just, you're a kid, man. A kid that's looking to be loved. And who am I? What am I? Your identity. You don't even know who you are. Little it's sad. Little bitch, scaredy cat. 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 Fucking little bitch, scaredy cat. Yeah, you bitch, scaredy cat. Yeah, dude. Look. Little fucking bitch, scaredy cat. You're looking at a little fucking. Watch out. Watch out. Fuck. Look, if you do not, if you do not like what I say, if you do not like what I talk about, you can walk down the street, man. There's plenty of places to sit and guzzle liquor and, and do what you want. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to tell you the truth because I don't want any of you to burn in hell. I don't want anyone to go to hell. I know the terror of the Lord. I try to persuade men and women to get right with God. I'm trying to persuade you to flee the wrath of God. I know the wrath of God. Hell fire for the wicked. The wicked are turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. You have forgotten God. You have forgotten God. No, God has sent me that you might understand. Understanding that your conviction, that you cannot just your sin. Your sin, you've sinned against God. You've sinned against God. You've done what is wicked. Now repent. Say, God, you are right. I've sinned against you. God, you are right. I've sinned against you. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck down and shut up. Oh, I tell you. I tell you, it's sin. It's sin. It's not just.